good morning. It is a rainy, nasty, disgusting weather day where I'm at and luckily I got a small little walk in before it broke because it was like pouring in the beginning of the shift and then a little bit of a break so I got like a mile and a half walk in and now I'm sitting in the truck and it's pouring again. We actually were moved out of our primary area into like another area to um, post. So I'm, I'm kind of like hanging out in the truck right now, just chilling. And uh, I thought I would talk to you about some of the best calls that I have responded to and some of the worst calls that I've responded to. So now I'm sure some of you think that like the best calls that paramedics respond to are like the traumas and the bloody and the gore and the grits and all that stuff. And honestly, like I have to be honest, the best calls that I have been on are the ones where I've actually made a difference or saved somebody's life or had something happy go on. And the worst calls are where the outcome wasn't um, that great or you know, just not happy calls at all. So I do have to tell you that some of the calls that I'm going to discuss with you, I'm not going to go into like complete detail, but they may be triggers for some and they may not be suitable for, for children. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to start with um, some of the worst calls I've been on because I would like to end this video on a positive note. So I would say probably one of the worst calls that I ever responded to, I was a, um, I can't remember if I, if I was already a paramedic or if I had just finished school and I was waiting for my results, but I was working with a nurse that particular day and we were, we had a trainee, like a brand new, um, person on the truck with us and he, it was his first day and we were in line at a railroad crossing, the you know the bars were down the lights were flashing there was a line of cars waiting and in the area that i was in it wasn't uncommon for a um like a train to come by so like it was a it was an a path where the train goes so we were waiting and waiting and waiting and it was like taking forever it seemed for the for the bars to go up so that we could pass so I took it upon myself to like take the ambulance out of the line and drive up to the front of the line to see if everybody was okay because I saw people getting out of their cars. I saw some woman crying. I saw like people in distress. So we moved up to the front of the line to see if everything was okay. And it turns out that someone in a motorcycle, like it was a Honda, for lack of a better word, a crotch rocket. This person thought that even though the bars were down that they were fast enough to beat the train they were not they beat the first train but not the second train coming the sec the other way and leads to say this person was hit on their motorcycle by the train and the poor people in the front of the line of the car line waiting to get through this intersection witnessed the whole thing and luckily, even though we were like just three or four cars back, we didn't see it. Thank God, because I don't think I would ever be able to get that sight out of my head. However, the aftermath of it is something that I won't ever forget. So I don't think I need to explain to you the image that we saw. His bike was in pieces. His body was in pieces. And... It was incredible. It was an incredible sight, like in a bad way, not in like an exciting way. It was horrifying. And this poor trainee on the truck, whose first day on a truck in EMS, like I'll never forget his face. I told him to go back to the truck and sit because it looked like he was not handling it well. And so that, that has to be one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. On my way home that night from work, I was driving down a dark road and every little thing on the side of the road, I was like, holy crap, it's a body part. It was horrifying. So EMS workers, we do get a little bit of a, um, a PTSD from calls like that. And you know, it's just something that's inevitable in our line of work. Like some calls are going to affect us and some are not. And sometimes like 
a defense mechanism that EMS has is that we internalize things and we re remove ourselves from the situation so that we, we can deal with it better as a professional. But it doesn't mean that we're emotionless. So if you see us coming in and dealing with something, it doesn't mean that we're emotionless. We just, we, we have these defense mechanisms and that's how we deal. So with that being said, um, another horrific call, like I've had several actually are involving kids, kids that died. I had a three-year-old who, um, somehow wound up under the cover in a swimming pool in the hot tub area of the swimming pool under the cover and drowned with a house full of people. And I'll, this was hard because you know, my partner at the time had just had a baby and I had not had children yet. So it was a little easier for me to, to go into the motions and to just click into that professional mode to get this kid intubated and CPR and an IV and stuff like that and get this child to the hospital. And you know, it was hard. That was a hard call. And I'll, I won't ever forget that one either because everyone's screaming at the parents, screaming at the parents, screaming at the parents, but like, it's easy. It's easy. And we are all guilty of it to think that the child is playing with someone and, and not ever think that they're going to get out the back door unnoticed. It's, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible, but you know, that that child didn't make it unfortunately but we tried our hardest my god did we try and you know i've had several child cpr calls that you know unfortunately um a lot of the times you know the outcome is not good when it comes to kids but we try we click into that you know machine mode and just do it so um another horrible child call that i had was i was actually working with my husband at the time and we had just had our baby. Our baby was little, I think less than a year old. And we responded to an unresponsive three week old. And what happened was dad was with the baby and dad fell asleep in bed with the baby and rolled on top of the baby and the baby suffocated. And it, hours went by, <laughs> hours went by where dad was sleeping and then finally woke up and the baby was blue, unresponsive, cold and it was horrible because, you know, you you go through training for baby CPR and stuff like that, and you you have the, you know, the mannequins, and you you know you pray in God that you never have to use those skills. But when I looked at this baby, it looked just like the mannequin, and that's what I had to that's what I had to do when I was on this call. Is like, it's just like the mannequin. It's just like the mannequin, and. Unfortunately, this baby was beyond help, and that was the most devastating part of it. The baby was beyond help by the time we were called to respond. So, and I've had I've had several stillborns, um, you know, miscarriages where, you know, we see things coming out and we know that the baby is not alive or not viable, and that that's another horrible thing that I've dealt with. We have had um, several SIDS cases. That's horrible. I had a case once where um, the baby was a twin. So imagine having twins and then one of them dies from SIDS. It's, it was horrible. So those are, those are some terrible, terrible calls. And not only kids, but like, you know, a spouse losing their significant other. That's horrible because I went through that. So I know how they feel and I put myself in their, in their place and I, I understand that what they're going through. So in the past, before this happened to me, I don't want to like seem insensitive, but I would pronounce the person and then sorry for your loss and leave. Um, trying not to get too personal, but like now that it's happened to me, I'm in a different position now where I know what happened to me that night where my husband passed away. And I know that somebody sitting next to me offering more than just sorry for your loss meant the world to me somebody who would connect with me as a person and that's what I try to do now I try to sit down and I'm like is there anything I can do is there anybody I can call is there any anything that you need and I think it's made me a better clinician unfortunately that circumstance had to happen for that for for this to be but you know I hate <laughs> telling somebody that their spouse or their significant other or their partner didn't make it. I hate it because 
it kind of brings me back to my situation and it, it's devastating. So those are the calls that bother me too. But you know, we, the, all we can do or all I can do is just do everything that I have been trained to do and do everything that I can to try to help make the situation better. And that's all we can do. So we had a couple of calls in between the last time I chatted. It is still raining and still disgusting out. And um, going back to like the last thing we talked about, telling the spouse, telling the mother of the, you know, the person that overdosed, that's, that's another horrible thing to deal with is telling a parent or somebody that your child has overdosed and died. And can you imagine being a parent finding your child with a needle in their arm in their bed or in the bathroom unresponsive with vomit everywhere and i just can't even imagine being that parent i can't but anyway another horrible thing that we deal with is suicide i'm not going to go into graphic details of the types of suicide that i have seen but i have seen many different methods of suicide and some are a lot more gruesome than others. I've seen gunshots, I've seen drug overdoses, I've seen pills, I've seen hangings, I've seen just horrible people that have jumped. I've just, it's just, to see a human being in that state after knowing that they are the ones that did it to themselves is just mind boggling to me. I can't understand it, I never will. So that's another horrific thing that we deal with. Um, I had a child playing with a battery in steel wool and burned themselves, third degree burns all over their hands and fire caused singe burns to their face, then their eyebrows burned off. And that was another horrible call. So I just, I could go on and on and on and on about the, t the terrible things that we see out here, but I'm going to go into some of the great things we see. So number one, amazing thing that we see is the birth of life and in my career I delivered three babies I want to say but I've been there for the birth of others like me hands on myself have delivered three babies and the first baby that I ever delivered by myself and it was only because my partner at the time literally said to me on our first day of being partners that I don't do childbirth and I don't do eyes so if we ever have somebody with something stuck in their eye, that's on you. If there's ever a lady giving birth, that's on you. And I was more than happy to step up to the plate and deliver this baby. But um, I delivered a baby to like, I, I want to say the girl was 15. She was a, a kid and she was living with her grandparents who were oblivious to the fact that she was even pregnant. And her 12 year old sister called 911 this was way back like many years ago but my partner's like put her on the ambulance put her in the stretcher I'm like no 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 the baby's coming <laughs> so get me a gown and some goggles because this baby's coming the head is coming it's coming out so on a staircase at the top of a staircase me standing on the stairs this baby's flying out and I delivered the baby and cut the cord and stimulated the baby the baby started crying i almost cried but i was too excited because it was amazing it was an amazing experience to bring this baby into the world so that was exciting the other two babies i delivered uh, my partner and i delivered it was um twins and the first baby was delivered before we got there and um the lady sat on the toilet and the baby like fell into the toilet so we had to be concerned with um you know aspiration and stuff like that so i mean the babies were okay both of them were okay it was amazing we wrapped them in blankets we were holding them on the way to the hospital it was just that was amazing that was <laughs> i had a lot of fun with that one so babies delivering babies welcoming life into the world that is um another amazing experience um Another really amazing experience is knowing if you made a difference in somebody's life and they are going home from the hospital, being discharged, going back to their family, going back to their everyday life. Um, a couple of years ago, I don't remember. Now, I've been a paramedic for 17 years, and this is one of the one of the few first calls I've had. It was very early on in my career. 
where a young mother who was, I want to say she was like 37. She might've even been younger than that, but I'll never forget it. We pulled up to this house. We got called for a CPR progress. We pulled up to this house and the two, her two little babies, her two children who probably were like five and seven were on the front lawn yelling, my mommy needs help. My mommy needs help. My mommy needs help. She needs, she needs help. She can't breathe. She's not breathing. So I was like, oh my God, we're coming, honey. We're coming. Don't worry. We're going to help mommy. So we grabbed their stuff and we ran upstairs and it was this young woman in cardiac arrest. We must have shocked her probably like 12 times. We gave her every possible drug in our drug box. We had her heart back and then we lost it. And then we had her heart back and then we lost it. Probably 12 times we shocked her. We put her on the stretcher. We brought her to the hospital, which was luckily like less than five minutes away. She got in there. They, they continued resuscitative efforts and she made a full recovery. And it turns out that this woman just had sinus surgery like the week before and she had a severe allergic reaction to the antibiotics that they put her on after surgery and she went to cardiac arrest it's it's crazy she was so young and i'm so thankful and i can't believe it they like, did an article on her in um you know the the hospital did an article on her that we she you know cpr is effective and how she was discharged and went back to full recovery and it was Black Friday. I'll never forget, it was Black Friday. I can't remember the year. I know who my partner was. I remember this call. And it was amazing to know that she went home to her family and her babies and we saved her life. Amazing. Um, another very rewarding experience is when you can, you know, help a family member, help a friend, somebody that you know as well as, you know, and, and you hear from them and you get constant updates that they're doing well and everybody's okay and you know and they thank you because we don't always get thankful you know thanks in this career and I'm not in it for the thanks I'm in it to help people but it is truly amazing when somebody can thank you for your service because it lets you know that you're appreciated but like I said I'm not in it for that I'm in it because this is what I was born to do I have I was born to do this so but um you know, I do like the fact that we can make a difference in somebody's life. We can save somebody's life. We can help somebody go home and live their life. And hopefully, you know, they pay it forward by living a healthy life. So that's another very rewarding experience for this job. About three years ago, my partner and I treated this woman in her 50s. She was having a massive heart attack, a massive heart attack. And she was at on vacation um, in her vacation home and she wanted to go to the local hospital but we convinced her my partner and i you cannot go to that hospital they don't have the facility or the means to handle this they don't have a cath lab they don't have you know um they can't do intervention surgery for you that you're going to need you're having a major heart cardiac event you have to go to a place that's a cardiac hospital so we convinced this woman to go to the cardiac hospital which was a little further away but it was ultimately the, the correct place for her to be um, for, you know, definitive care. So we convinced her to go there and she made, you know, they, they did a cath lab, they did a stent for her and she went home and she wrote a letter to the, to our employer thanking us. And she literally every year on the date of the year, the, the day that she had her heart attack, the day that we saved her life, she writes and contacts us to see how we're doing and to thank her again for another year that we gave her back and that's emotional because it just verify it, it like validates why I went into this field because we save people and we allow them to go on with their life so that's that's another very rewarding thing about this job and that's that was another amazing call that I had any call is a good call if the outcome is good and you made a difference in somebody's life and you brought a life into this world or you prolonged a life and, and they can live a productive life and the outcome was good. So that is why I'm in this profession. So that, you know, if you're considering going into this profession, it's not always bad. It's not always guts. It's not always gloom. There's a lot of rewarding experiences that you can get. At, you know, being a paramedic and being e in EMS and in the medical field. So I would highly recommend doing it if this is what you're interested in. Just take the leap, go to school for it, go, you know, 
do it because you won't regret it. It's amazing. It's an, it's an amazing job and I love what I do. And I'm very fortunate that I was able to continue doing what I love to do after being laid off for a company that went out of business, another company picked me up and I am so grateful and happy to be able to work and do the job that I love. So I'm going to leave you on a final note and it's actually one of the, I want to say it wasn't funny at the time, but honestly the, the patient was in really good spirits and making jokes. So I can say that it was one of the funniest calls I had was um, <clears throat> a man who worked for a tree service was up in a tree trimming a branch and he slipped and fell he was okay mind you he was okay didn't hit his head never lost consciousness didn't have any seizures no trauma except except a very large branch went right through his scrotum ouch but it went through the skin of his scrotum and missed his testicles so his important parts were spared, but I kept offering this man morphine. I'm like, do you want something for pain? And this was back in the day when we used morphine for pain. Now we have better drugs like ketamine and, and fentanyl. But back in the day, I'm like, dude, you don't want any morphine? Like take the morphine. <laughs> I feel pain for you. Like it was, I, it was nuts, literally. No, <laughs> but it missed him. It missed them. And this branch was right through his scrotum missing his testicles i could not believe it but and i had a male partner at the time my male partner was like "Ooh, ah, uh, take the drugs take the drugs <laughs> and the guy i'm like dude are you sure that doesn't hurt and he goes the only thing that's hurting right now is my pride this poor man but anyway thank you so much for joining me today i really appreciate it i love talking about my job and i love that you're here listening to me and that you're interested in what i have to say i really appreciate your support so if you could hit that subscribe button down below hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time i post i also have a new instagram so you can follow me over there at everyday underscore tidbits and make sure you i already think i already said this but hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time i post and like and share the video with your friends i'd appreciate that but anyway it's raining it's yucky it's nasty i'm going to try to eat some lunch now and finish up a chart and i will catch you in the next video bye